What's the word, y'all? Whoa, the Boston Celtics are in the NBA Finals. Yes, I understand it's not my normal setup, but we just got done taping our TV show, Numbers on the Board, premieres Tuesdays at 2 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. And I don't want to drive 25 minutes home to get this video out. I want to talk to y'all about the Celtics Finals run right here, right now. Before I do that, let me get my flowers to the Indiana Pacers, man. I know a lot of people are going to put an asterisk next to the Boston Celtics run. Was it the easiest run to the finals of all time? Maybe. Some people might put an asterisk next to the Indiana Pacers Conference finals run because, well, they went against some teams that were injured. None of that is rooted in reality. Like, oh, cool, it's cool for conversations. But the reality is you were in the conference finals and you did that this season. After 10 years of not making it, you did it. And that's something to be proud of, right? Um, and, and the thing I would be proud of most is that you were down 0-2. You found out that your, your all-NBA player, Tyrese Halliburton, was not going to play. And you still went out there and played two really, really good games. Obviously, you didn't win those games. It, it really felt like a team that had been there before versus a team that had been there before. Where it got some costly turnovers and bad fouls. And ultimately, the Boston Celtics ended up winning. We found out, uh, if you're Pacers fans, you probably already knew this part, that Nimhard is just a stud. Whether he's a secondary ball handler or a primary ball handler, he's very, very good at basketball. The Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam pairing looked better and better throughout the course of the season. And then once we got to the playoffs, it just continuously looked better. And then Miles Turner just showcased, like, hey, you shouldn't just trade a person because NBA Twitter told you to. Remember when Miles Turner was like a Laker and even he was talking about him being a Laker because it felt like it was inevitability where well, they decided to stay, keep him there. And he was as consistent as anybody in this entire playoff run. I know he had a couple games that wasn't great, but for the most part, he was phenomenal. And you got some things to build off of. I'm curious to see what happens this offseason. Because, again, no askers from me personally, but there are some teams in the Eastern Conference. Now, the, the Eastern Conference is not the Western Conference when it comes to competition, but there are some really good teams out East that are either getting better or getting healthy or going to add some people in free agency. So I'm curious to see what the Pacers decide to do this offseason. Is it simply bring back Pascal Siakam and Obi Toppin and then let continuity do the rest and let these younger players get better, or are they going to try to do something else? Time will tell. Let's switch gears to talk about the team that won this series, the Boston Celtics, who throughout this entire playoff run have only lost two games. Two games. Again, let's, let's talk about this asterisk thing. Let's talk about the easiest walk to the finals. For me personally, none of that really matters. Now, could it matter once we get to June 6th and they're going against the Dallas Mavericks in the finals? Maybe. Yeah, maybe it could matter. But as of right here, right now, I couldn't care less who they went against to get to this point. Because when you were as consistent and as dominant as they were in the regular season, this is what you play for. This is why you want to be the one seed. You want the favorable matchups. Nobody is looking to go against the best of the best every chance they get. So, yes, it went five games against the Miami Heat without Jimmy Butler. Yes, it went five games against the Cleveland Cavaliers, no Jared Allen, no Donovan Mitchell towards the back of it. Yes, it went four games against the Indiana Pacers, no Tyrese Halliburton for the last couple, year, last couple games. None of that is really relevant. Because some people will tell you throughout history, some of the greatest players of all time do not know the feeling of touching the NBA Finals floor. You think if you ask those dudes, would they rather have the career that didn't touch the Finals or they have the career with the cakewalk to the Finals? They taking the cakewalk 100% of the time. 100% of the time. And at the end of the day, it's not like this team was some mediocre team come regular season and then got all the injury luck. This team was dominant for the regular season. So dominant that nobody talked about them. Me included. Look at the pay, look at the, the Celtics videos on this channel. You can search it on this channel. I did not get around to making a full-fledged Celtics video much this season because there wasn't much to talk about other than them dominating teams. But on the, on the podcast, I got to it all the time. Right On the podcast about a month or so ago, um, I, I posed a question, and I guess this, this question uh, doesn't have any bearings now because, again, they did go against some teams that were without injury. But throughout the course of the season, I had been posing the question that are the Celtics just so very dominant that no matter what else happens across the association, we're ending with the Celtics winning the championship. You know what I'm saying? Like the 20, this is not on the same level. I don't want you to misinterpret. The 2017 Warriors are the greatest constructed team of all time, but I'm just using this as an example right now. When we were covering basketball in 2017, we all knew – that that team was not only going to make the finals, but win the finals, but we still covered it as if somebody else had a chance. And then this is a Celtics really first year of having this. You know, I know they had some, some years they made it to the finals. They had some years they had a one seed, but this team feels different. It's, it's coached differently. They have more depth. I mean, they're practically running out like five all-star-ish players every single night, right? But when 2017, we knew that that Warriors team was going to win every single series they went against, but we still had to act like, we still had to talk about the other 29 teams as if we didn't know the Warriors are going to win. And I pose a question. 
Are the Celtics similar in the sense that the, their dominance in a regular season will translate over so evenly that we're doing all this talking about, oh, the, at that point, the question was Denver Nuggets repeating. We're talking about the Denver Nuggets. We're talking about OKC, the Lakers, the Warriors, all of these other Western Conference teams. They might just go against the Boston Celtics in the finals and get smoked. That was a month or so ago. Now, it's not like the Boston Celtics are the perfect team because, hell, you could say Kenny. They just went to four-game series. If they swap again, a win is a win. All of, that's all that really matters. But those last two games, they had to overcome an 18-point lead for the Indiana Pacers and then had to get like a, a really critical pass out to Derek White three and then a great possession from, from Drew Holiday to beat the Pacers without Tyrese Halliburton. Does that, doesn't that showcase that they're not as good as you might think? And maybe. But I also think this is oh, – I'm sorry for the mic. I also think this could be a, a, a conversation of finally facing that adversity. Right? They didn't really face that in the first couple rounds. The Miami Heat series, the Heat hit 23 three-pointers, man. 23 three-pointers in game number two. But other than that, they were dominant. And the Cleveland Cavaliers series, there was no real adversity. There was no real back-against-the-wall moments. And then you get to the conference finals, the back was against the wall. Again, it was into an inferior team. But still, good reps. Down by 18, we come back from those. Down by five with four minutes to go. Jason Tatum, how do you respond? You responded greatly. You know, like the Pacers were in this series wholeheartedly. It took a Jalen Brown miraculous double bang three in the first game of the series to even get to overtime. So it's like I could see it both ways. I could definitely see it both ways. Which way am I leaning towards? Again, the moment they acquired Drew Holiday, you could go watch the tape. I posted questions to the guys. Who's coming out of Easter Conference? Everybody else said Milwaukee Bucks, and I understood it. Damian Lillard was on the team with Giannis. I don't think any of us understood the Adrian Griffin thing wasn't going to work. But I said the Celtics. And from that moment on, I've been saying that the Celtics will win a championship. I've, I've not wavered at all. I've set the Celtics this entire, entire way. Because in that moment in time, I saw that they had upgraded some positions of need, and they looked like a team that was ready and they was hungry. I will remind you that last time they were in the finals, Jason Tatum was 24 years old. 24. And though this, this playoff run so far for Jason Tatum hasn't been amazing, he's starting to look better. So you're telling me that he's getting better and better throughout the playoffs and they're about to go June 6th starting the NBA Finals? Now, granted, whatever team they go against, again, probably the Dallas Mavericks, is going to be a, a, a way better defensive team than any of the teams he's really seen so far. Because, again, no Jared Allen in the last series versus the Cavs, who are normally a good defensive team. And in the Pacers, you know, the Pacers weren't a great defensive team regular season or postseason. So the Mavericks will be the best defensive team they've seen so far in this playoff run. But still, we're seeing Tatum look better and better. Jalen Brown continuously has been great. Drew Holiday had a full series and a half uh, where he was – Pretty bad, let's be real. But since then, he looked great. Derek White was Clay Thompson in series number one. Could he do it again? I don't really know. This team has been so very consistent when it comes to their success that we, we just write it off as being a normal Boston Celtics season. And I think part of that is unfair in a way. Um, considering their star players are so very young. Like we've seen the whole evolution of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and the whole time they're in conference finals or NBA finals, they were both extremely, extremely young. This is the team I believe is going to have enough. Now, if they do not win, I know I have saw some people talk about, no, this wouldn't be a failure because this is their first year together. If they went to the finals and, and well, they're in the finals and they go against the Dallas Mavericks and they lose that, that would be a failure, objectively a failure, because they'd be going against a team that also was basically just constructed two months ago. So they should be the heavy favorite. All season long, they dominated. All postseason long, they've dominated. And now they got to go against the Dallas Mavericks to see if they're the best team in, in basketball. And again, I don't live in a world of asterisks and this and that. All I know is that there will be one team raising the Larry O'Brien trophy, and that is the end of it all. That is the, all, that's the end of it all. If Tatum gets the first one, if Luka gets the first one, I'm going to be excited for either one of them. But I do want to give tip my hat to the Boston Celtics for never wavering and continuously dominating. We'll see if that translates.